Have you ever wondered how many calories and macros that you should be eating to reach your specific fitness goals? Whether you wanna lose fat, build muscle, or lift the most amount of weight possible? Or maybe you plugged your information into some online calculator, but you're just not sure if these are the right numbers for you. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can set your calories and your macronutrient targets in chronometer specifically because honestly, I think it's the best app to track your nutrition. I'm gonna be giving you access to my free Notion calorie calculator as well, so that you can plan not only this phase of nutrition, but different phases of nutrition down the road as well. So be sure to stick around for that. All right, welcome back to video two in the chronometer video series. In the first video, we went ahead and gave you a full tour of not only the app for chronometer, but the desktop version as well. So if you missed that, be sure to go ahead and check that out as well. But like I said earlier in today's video, we're going over how to set calorie and macronutrient targets in chronometer. All right, so if you're not sure how to calculate your calories or your macronutrient targets, then you came to the right video. Down in the description, I have linked over to my free Notion calorie calculator, and I'll go ahead and leave a link to the video on how to use it somewhere up here as well. It's totally free. All you need to do is just click the link down below in the description, and you'll get instant access, so you can go ahead and follow along. We can go ahead and hop into the Notion calorie calculator calculator and it's super easy to go ahead and calculate our calories. And what's really great about this is you can not only come up with a calorie and macro target for right now, we can go ahead and plan other phases down the road. So for example, right here on the screen, I have a recomp at a maintenance calorie level here, and then going into a deficit and then going into a surplus, again, all sort of based on some numbers that can be adjusted if needed. But it's a good way to sort of plan out, you know, multiple months of dieting or gaining or whatever it is that you want to do. So we'll go ahead and click on new up here. And this will add a new sort of diet phase. And we'll go ahead and just open this wide up and we'll just call this, um, you know, maintenance example. I can never spell maintenance, right? Maintenance. So how you use this, uh, it's super easy. You'll just come in here, you can select your phase. Um, this doesn't do anything besides just sort of label it. So if you know, you're going into surplus maintenance or deficit for this maintenance example, we'll go ahead and select maintenance and you can select a start and then an end date. So this is uh, sort of helpful. I think. Um, so we'll come in here and we'll just select that. And then this is a formula here that just calculates the number of weeks in between those two dates. You can come in here and select your unit system, whether that's imperial or metric. I'm here in the state, so I'm gonna go ahead and select imperial. You select your gender. I'll go ahead and select male since I'm a male. And here you select your activity level. So this is sort of where it is taking into account the exercise activity level. And if you're unsure on this, um, you know, I would go ahead and select, you know, like if you're kind of in between very active and moderately active, choose the lesser active one just to play things on the safe side. And you can always change it going down the road. Go ahead and add in your age, um, your weight in pounds if you chose uh, imperial, height in inches if you chose it uh, in, in imperial. And then here it's going to give you the calories needed. So again, that is sort of like my maintenance calories right there. It's saying that I need 3,200 calories in order to maintain my current weight of 220 pounds. Um, and then going forward here with this goal adjustment, this is where you can go ahead and select your deficit or your surplus or your maintenance. Uh, and if you, you don't want to select your maintenance, you just select zero and then you can select a positive number or your surplus or a negative number for your deficit. Uh, since this is a maintenance example, we'll go ahead and just select 0%. Come in here to protein level. You can select low, medium, normal, or high. Normal is, so what this is gonna do is gonna set um, your protein at one gram per pound of body weight. Medium is gonna be a little bit less than that. Low is gonna be a little bit less than that. Off the top of my head, I can't remember exactly what those targets are. It'll put it on the screen though. Um, and then high is 1.15 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Medium, I think is, that would be what, 0.85, and then low is 0.7. Those are sort of the, the ranges of protein that I would recommend. So for this, we'll go ahead and just select normal, and that puts it at 220. So then these are all formulas down here, so don't mess with any of that stuff. And then here you can go ahead and choose if you prefer carbs or fats. Now, if your goal is to lose a little bit of weight or gain a little bit of weight, you know, and you're not trying to like hop on stage or anything like that, you just wanna like look better with your shirt off, your normal person, then it doesn't really matter how you sweat up your carbs and fats. I would say do what you prefer, whether that's you prefer a little bit more fatty food or you prefer a little bit more carbohydrate dense food. What this selection is gonna do though, is if you select carbs, what it's gonna do is it's going to take your total 
total calories and it's going to subtract the calories from protein and then it's going to, going to allocate 60 percent of your calories to carbs and 40 percent of your calories to fats and if you select fats it's going to do just the opposite of that it's going to take your total calories subtract the initial calories from protein and then take those remaining calories and allocate 60 percent of them to fats and 40 percent of them to carbs so for this example, we have our 3,200 calories for maintenance, 220 grams of protein, 230 grams of carbs, and 155 grams of fat. It's that easy. So now it's time to put these into chronometer. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and start off on the desktop version of this because that's where I'm at right now, but I'll also show you how to do this on the mobile as well. So to go ahead and change your calories in your macronutrient targets, what we're gonna wanna do is is come here to the more tab over on the left hand side click the down arrow and then we're going to click on profile and targets so we have this profile section up here and then below that we have the energy burned section now you can go ahead and let chronometer sort of guesstimate your calories as well as your macronutrients for you i wouldn't do that i would just use the free notion calorie calculator uh, i think it might be a little more accurate as well as you have the ability to create those different sets whether that's for maintenance uh, surplus or deficit so that's what i would recommend but just just to sort of explain this section a little bit here here we have the basal metabolic rate so again it's the amount of energy needed to keep you alive and so the default setting here in chronometer uses the mifflin saint jour equation which will fluctuate with changes in your age sex height and weight and, and that's what i would recommend you could also do the uh you know if, if you were going to do this right initially i'd recommend using the notion calorie calculator but if you are going to just use chronometer then come in here and i would keep it on default next we have the baseline activity level so again this is sort of similar to that drop down in the notion calorie calculator so for here i would just select you know if you're in between again very active moderately active select moderately active select the less active and if you go ahead and select a different one it kind of tells you gives you like a basic example of what lightly active is for example basic daily living sitting eating walking around the office or house and or light exercise one to three times per week and then lastly you can select if you want chronometer to calculate the thermic effect of food for you so if you turn that on we have down here it's going to take your total daily energy burned um you know so it's going to uh calculate your bmr here and it's going to also add exercise as well as add in the thermic effect of food so that's if you want to to, you know let chronometer do the calculations for you but again i would recommend using the uh, notion calorie calculator all right so moving down to energy targets so here is the energy summary displays so you can either go ahead and select target or balance so target will display your remaining energy target including your weight goal and balance will display the surplus or deficit of your energy consumed versus burned i keep it on target you can choose what you'd like and then here this is where you can go ahead and select a custom energy target or a weight goal so when you choose a custom energy target that's where you would just take your number from notion here the 3200 and you would just plug that in uh right here and if you select weight goal so when you select weight goal the the settings dynamically calculate your energy needs based on your profile energy burn and your weight goals and when you go ahead and select that you can go ahead and add in your weight goal so let's say again i'm currently 220 let's say if i want to get down to 200 you can go ahead and use this slider here to determine like how quickly you want to get there um you know this so this is 0.75 pounds per week if you scroll all the way down it's two pounds per week and then you get this little warning sign here uh, and then it also sort of gives you a little bit of timeline which is sort of helpful as well or if we go this way that's to gain weight so you wouldn't go that way if you set a lower weight here but yeah again i would just select the custom energy target so we'll go ahead type in our 3200 that we got from the notion calorie calculator and the calorie section is now taken care of so if we come on down here to the macronutrient targets this is where we can go ahead and select from a few different options there's the ratios where you can just add in a percentage of calories to allocate which i wouldn't recommend doing there's also the keto calculator which if you're on keto go ahead and go for that i don't do keto or really coach keto so I'm not going to really go into that again what i recommend is coming here to the fixed targets and taking the numbers from our example here and putting them in here so protein was at 220 carbs were at 230 
and fats were at 155. So we'll go ahead and see, you know, we'll get this warning that your targets don't match. We're five calories off. That's because for the notion calorie calculator, I set it so that it would round. So it'd give you nice, even numbers. It's not going to mess up your progress one way or another, but that's just why it won't add up perfectly. And lastly, down below here, we have the nutrient target. So you can come in here and show what you want visible um, on the general. You can come under vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates. And so you could come in here and change, you know, your daily target for all of these. But to be honest, I don't even really know how you would uh, come up with those numbers. So I think what chronometer provides you is a really good starting point. I would just keep an eye on that. And worst of all, you know, like this is just going to be some really good data that you could then take to your doctor, maybe get some blood work done, see where you're deficient, uh, you know, wh where you maybe have too much of something and kind of go from there. Okay, so that is how you go ahead and set your calories and macro targets on the desktop. Let's go ahead and hop over into the app for iOS real quick and just show you how to find that stuff over there. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and fire up the chronometer app. And then over here in the bottom right, we're going to go ahead and click on more. And we're going to click on targets. And then here it just is in a little different order uh, than it is on the desktop. So the macro targets is at the top. So again, you'd come over here. And this is where I would recommend setting the it to fixed over ratio or keto. If we come back here, uh, the next thing we have the macro scheduler. So again, if you wanted to, you know, maybe on training days, you have a little bit higher calories, maybe on rest days, you have a little bit lower calories. This is where you can go ahead and come in and change those targets uh, on the app for iOS. We'll go ahead and leave that as it is for now. Next, we'll come into the energy setting. So this is where we go ahead and set our calories. Again, there's the energy burned uh, that we can go ahead and calculate up there, which again, and I wouldn't put too much stock in the energy burned, whether you're looking at the app or the desktop. I would really just use chronometer to focus on tracking what you are inputting. And again, based on the energy burn calculations that we ran in chronometer, you know, I think that's going to be better off, you know, tracking your food intake as well as your weight and sort of monitoring as you go. That's going to be better than trying to accurately guesstimate how many calories you're burning. Now we come down here. Uh, here, if we keep on scrolling, this is where we go ahead and can put in our custom energy target. It's way at the bottom. I don't know why they do it like that, uh, but you can go ahead and see that 3,200 that we went ahead and put in there from the desktop. We go ahead and come back here. And next we have the nutrient targets. So this is where you could come in and maybe you want to come in and set a specific daily target, uh, calcium or whatever, you know, that's how you would do it. Again, I would just leave those as they are for now, unless, you know, you specifically know specific numbers for specific vitamins and minerals that you want to track, go for it. But this is just what I recommend just leaving it as is. So there you have it. That is how you can go ahead and not only calculate your calories and macronutrients by using my notion calorie calculator, which you can get for free down in the description, as well as how to plug that stuff into chronometer. Now, I believe all this stuff, setting the calories and the macros and chronometer comes on the free account. But if you wanted to upgrade to the gold account, there will be a link down in the description where you can save 10% off your order. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, I'll go ahead and leave that down there for you. But now that you have your calories and your macronutrients set, as well as plugged into a chronometer, you are one step closer to reaching your fitness goals. Now, in the next video, we're going to go ahead and dive into how to create custom meals and custom recipes to make tracking that much easier in chronometer. And the easier you can make tracking your calories and your macros, the more likely you are to stick to it and the more likely you are to reach your goals. So be sure to stay tuned for that video. It'll go ahead and be linked somewhere right around here. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. We'll go ahead and see you in the next video.